a receipt for payment for 10 gallons of gasoline. Familiar object you've had it many times yourself if you drive a car, but this particular receipt. Your receipt, Inspector. Tanks full, oil and water fine. Thank you. Hmm. Quite a receipt you hand out. My partner's idea. <laughs> he likes it. Look at this, Sergeant. Stamped with a gallop, complete with corks, and marked settled. Rather appropriate, eh? Well, today, as I told you, this receipt lies in its proper place. An honored place. In the Black Museum. <laughs> From the annals of the Criminal Investigation Department of the London Police, we bring you the dramatic stories of the crimes recorded by the objects in Scotland Yard's Gallery of Death, the Black Museum. museum, a museum of murder. Here, here lies death, arranged in glass cases, lined along the shelves on the tables, larger objects standing on the floor. Over there's an old-fashioned trunk. There's nothing in this trunk but some old clothes. The clothes led to a furnace. The things in the furnace led a man to the gallows. Is a teacup and its saucer. Charming, graceful, real bone china. But the contents were deadly. Ah, here we are. Here's the receipt I told you about. Settled, it says, paid in full. Ten gallons of gas. From the evidence, Police Constable Matthews had anything but murder on his mind that very early morning, an hour before dawn as he patrolled a quiet country road near his home in Essex. Summer must be almost over. Cold this time of morning. Not even false dawn yet. Nights are getting longer. Pleasant enough this tour during summer. Lonely a bit, I suppose. Gives a man time for thinking. What do I think about? Ellen and the breakfast she'll have for me. <laughs> Egg, bit of bacon, cup of tea, then some sleep. Ridiculous. Grown man sleeping in broad daylight when you come to think of it. Well, company coming. Seems to be travelling at quite a rate. Too fast even this time of night. Stop this car! Pull over here! I know that car. Never saw him drive like that before. Well, in my case, sir, you're, you're going rather fast. I... Oh, what's the idea, Constable? I'm in a hurry. Yes. Oh, it seems. Let me see your license. I know how to drive. Where'd you come from? Long Ridge Garage. It's a long way from here. Called out on an emergency. I said I'm in a hurry to get back now. And this car is yours? Oh, it's mine. Oh, another of you. In the back seat. Can't you keep that flashlight out of my eyes? What's the number of this car? See for yourself. It's on the plate. I know the number. Do you? What is this? An investigation? If you want it that way. Oh, oh, oh. What are you doing? He's dead, all right. I'm making sure. No dead man keeps my face in his eyes. Uh, now he's got no eyes. Hurry! We gotta get out of here! turned skyward, 
Policeman Constable Matthews didn't see the dawn. Later that morning, another man trudged along that Essex road, nail sack on shoulder, busy with his own thoughts until... Good! It's Matthews. Or what's left of him. Oh, what a rotten way to die. Here, yeah, I'll have to get help. Help was very soon in coming. First the local police, then the wires to London, harmed with the word. Can you leave the body where it is? I expect so, Inspector. He won't worry about it, poor fellow. Very well. I'll be down from the yard as soon as I can get a car. Inspector Manson and Sergeant Wright left Scotland Yard, careening out of the gates on two wheels and roared out of London and into Essex. They set a record reaching the scene of the crime. The two policemen, quiet in their plain clothes, asked the local constable to move the crowd of curious well back from the body. And the team from the yard went to work. A rotten killing, Inspector. Bad as I've seen. Four bullets where one would have been enough. It looks like a cop hater, Inspector. Turn cop killer. Lift the head a moment. Right, sir. Oh. Here they are. Two slugs. Forty-five. Went right through him. Oh, we never had a chance. The angle of the cheek wound, sir. From below and to the side. Back seat of the car he stopped. Tire marks, Inspector? Hmm? Right here. In the shoulder of the road. And deep enough for casks. Still holding his pencil. It's what we're all afraid of on traffic duty. What's your number and the shots? That's all. I still don't get the eyes, Inspector. Old story. Legend. When a criminal shoots a policeman, the criminal's image is supposed to be imprinted on the poor fellow's retinas. Just superstition. Let's go, Sergeant. We Just superstition, but perhaps a mark, a clue, pointing to the habitual criminal. The police routine began. The tire marks were taken up in plaster casts. The bullets were turned over to ballistics. The search, the almost blind search, began. In the course of their duty, Inspector Manson and Sergeant Wright dropped in on the superintendent of the local police. Gee, the car's over my rounds. I can't afford to wait until the insurance company is satisfied, nor for my patients. I know you're busy, what with the murder and all that, but surely you can spare some time. <coughs> oh, what? Oh, Inspector Manson, come in. Sorry to intrude, sir, but the sergeant and I are about ready to go back to London. I see. Uh, this is Dr. Lewis, our resident practitioner. Doctor, Inspector Manson and Sergeant Wright, Scotland Yard. How do you do? Uh, how do you do, sir? Scotland Yard. Oh, about the murder of that poor policeman. That's right, Doctor. And the doctor's car's missing. I've been explaining to him how he's been tied up on the killing. Which, of course, I understand. But I need my car, gentlemen. I almost missed a birth last night. Came out of my house, expected to hop into my car... No car. Uh, about what time was that, sir? About 3 a.m. First time I think it's like that's ever happened round here. I see. Rather interesting coincidence. Well, how's that, Inspector? One of the familiar patterns in our work is to have a policeman attacked when he stops a stolen car. By the Lord Harry. May I, Superintendent? Of course. Will you describe the car, Doctor? Within minutes, Sergeant Wright was on the telephone. All station alarm. Dark Blue Morris Sedan, number TW8529. Registered in the name of Dr. Robert... Within six hours, it had been abandoned in the London suburb. Dr. Lewis was taken for the automobile ride of his life. Siren screaming, tire squealing. No time to waste. This your car, Doctor? It certainly is. Give it a going over, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Let's have a look inside, Doctor. Hmm... Flashes on the outside of the door. Could be blood. Yes, yes it might very well be. Oh. You own a pistol, Doctor? Good heavens, no. What? Cartridge case on the floor. Here. See it? Mm. 45 caliber. Notice anything missing? Yes, my instrument bag. I left it on the back seat, as I usually do. Some quite valuable surgical equipment and all that. Hard to come by these days. I understand. Yes, sir? Uh, earth and dried grass, sir. Curbside wheels, front and back. Mudguard damaged on that side as well. And the tyres, sir, I'd not want to state positively until we checked the cast, but they look the same as the marks on the road. Ah, oh, excellent, Sergeant. Here's something may help. Uh, Inspector, Sergeant. Yes, Doctor? The speedometer. I keep a trip record every 24 hours. Just a habit. When I left the car last night, the speedometer read 40.9 miles. 
It's 84.3 now. And the car has come 43.4 miles. That may be quite a help to us, Doctor. Perhaps more than you realize. The first point which came to mind as the inspector and the sergeant drove back to Scotland Yard. 43 miles. Took a lot of back roads. Whoever it was must be known. No fingerprints in the car either. Then next, as the car turned into the yard, he must know Essex rather well, an angle worth working on. A little while later, with a pile of dossiers on his desk, the inspector said, Hmm. What do you think of this one, Sergeant? Thomas Green, also known as Greeny Thomas and Ted Grenville. Convicted 1920, possession of firearms. Mm -hmm. Convicted fraud and forgery. Convicted car theft. Ah. So, known as Operator Garage in Eastwood, Essex. Alters stolen car. No, Essex, doesn't he? He's a possibility, sir. Habitual. Fits the rest of the characteristics. Shall we have Mr. Green in, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Operator, hue and cry message to all stations. Photo for posting will follow shortly. Wanted for questioning, Tom Green, also known as Green... So Tom far, so good. Maybe they were on the right track, maybe not. The alarm went out. Out to every station house and crossroads in England, every policeman from the south coast to the border of Scotland was alerted for Mr. Thomas Green, also known as Greeny Thomas, and so forth. Result? Nothing. No, not a sign. Not a trace. <laughs> Here's something, Sergeant. Police in Lancashire picked up a fellow answering Green's description. He confessed to a burglary to prove he wasn't in Essex the night Matthews was shot. I imagine they know we don't like cop killers. No, they don't like cop killers. But they still had no trace of the suspect. None at all. For seven long weeks. <laughs> Want to make something of it? Hey, hey, what's going on here? I'll have a report this, you know. This man forced me into the wall. Is that correct, sir? It's your green. There's an order out for you. Keep hey. back, driver, or you'll get it too. Hey. Hey. Dirty rotten. Get the number. Get the number of that car. I can't see. I, I got it, lad. GR5607. <laughs> Today, as I told you, this receipt lies in its proper place, an honored place, in the Black Museum. shot, luckily not fatally. Another car number obtained, immediate check, yes, a stolen car, a Vauxhall this time. Several times thereafter, in the course of ten days, that number appeared on the Scotland Yard teletype. Armed robbery, cinema cashier, lone thief seen leaving area in car number GR5607. That's green, all right. He's broken cover with a vengeance. <laughs> There it is again, Sergeant. Same number. This time he held up a railway station. He's made another stop, sir. This time a bank messenger. Same car, same number, GR5607. Inspector Manson here. Sergeant Wright, sir. Report from Sheffield. They've got the box all Green was using. He sold it to a used car dealer. Man suspected of being a fence. Meet me at the gate, Sergeant. We are going to Sheffield. <laughs> Constable Matthews is long gone, I know. Several weeks, in fact. But the wheels of vengeance for his unnecessary death ground on in Sheffield, Inspector Manson. 
talked briefly into the point. Now get this straight. The man who sold you this car is wanted on suspicion of murder. Hold out on us and you'll be an accessory after the fact. We'll see to that. That was I to know, Inspector. He had owner's papers. They looked all right. I paid him in good faith, I did. Save it. You received stolen goods. Now then, what do you know about this man? Nothing, sir. Nothing. Tell him, Sergeant. You know plenty. We happen to have checked. You were associated with him in a garage business in Essex. Now talk. I'm honest. I didn't know nothing. He told me he got the Vauxhall through a garage he's interested in in, in Battersea. You can't pick anything. Back to London. The chase seemed getting warmer. Outside the garage in Battersea, Inspector Manson and Sergeant Wright sat in their park car. I waited. Car coming this way, sir. The lights in the rear view mirror. I see it, Sergeant. Patience, Sergeant. He's only turning you. I caught his face in the lights, sir. It's green, all right. Chauffeur's outfit. Let's go. Take care. He's left the car on the ramp, sir. Yes. Probably gone to change his clothes. Check the car, Sergeant. Side pocket of the door. Right, sir. A Webley 45, Inspector. <laughs> A 45. Let's get him. Listen a moment. He's in there. Take care of the door, sir. Yes, sir. What's the meaning of this? What do you want? You, Green. Uh, uh, let go, copper. If I'd not done it. Uh. Oh, thanks, sir. He almost had me. Put the cuffs on him. We'll take the Webley and get him back to the yard. Hello. Uh, what's this on the workbench? Medical case, sir. Initials on it, RL. Uh. For Robert Lewis, Inspector? I wouldn't be surprised. Let's go, Sergeant. And you needn't be too gentle with him. At long last, Tom Green, alias Greeny Thomas, was in custody. And a none too pleasant customer, this fellow. Hey, when do I get something to eat, copper? We'll get to that. You're in for questioning on a possible murder charge. I must warn you, anything you may say... <laughs> Where were you on the night of October 26th last? I was in London with my girl. What's more, she'll swear to it. Where did you get the revolver we found in the pocket of the car? I bought it from a sailor. <laughs> Never got his name or number. We found another Wibbly in the doctor's case, Green. Where did you get that? I ain't talking. The first one has been certified as the gun that killed Constable Matthews. That's the gun you said you bought from the sailor in September. What? Oh, then I got it mixed up. Oh. Yeah, I must have bought the gun in the case from the sailor, and, and then when you say kill the copper, I picked up in November. So what? You've got plenty of cops, haven't you, Inspector? <laughs> How are we coming on the check of Green's friends, Sergeant? They're all accounted for and all with alibis, except this fellow Davis. Yes, it's funny about him. Yeah? What? Well, he spent most of his life in stir. But the last time he got out, he upped and married in Sheffield. In Sheffield? And Green took that stolen Vauxhall to Sheffield. Let's bring Mr. Davies in, Sergeant. I'm rather interested in him. Once again, the two police officers drove their car in the direction of Sheffield. Along the road, they stopped at a service station. Ten gallons of gasoline and a look at the oil and water. I pay the attendant and ask for a receipt. Vouchers will have to be signed in the usual police routine. Your receipt, Inspector. Thanks for oil and water fine. Thank you. Mm. Quite a receipt you hand out. <laughs> My partner's idea. He likes it. Look at this, Sergeant. Stamped with a gallows, complete with corpse. And marked settled. Rather appropriate, eh? <laughs> if they've had no success in Sheffield. Too late, Inspector. Our bird flown? Yes, sir. Left town the day before yesterday, the day we picked up Green. Oh, I see. Well, we'll find him. I'm beginning to feel more like a tracer of missing persons than an officer on a murder case. The familiar police machinery went back into action. The underworld was watched. The hue and cry message went to all stations. Within a few days this time, word came through. 
Davis has been seen with his wife in Liverpool, sir. All right, Sergeant, we'll travel. was a down-at-the-heels lodging house, disreputable, filthy. Inspector Manson made a decision. We'll wait for him outside, Sergeant. I found that most men will put up a much harder struggle when their women are present. So they waited. Waited in the dark, shabby street. Far off, they could hear the foghorns of the ships in Liverpool's busy roadstead. Eerie noise they make, isn't it? I don't mind it. Seems, uh, well, friendly. Uh, it depends, sir. Hey, Someone just passed the second street lamp down that way, sir. Don't show yourself. Wait until he passes under the next one. We can be sure then. That's our man. When he's closer, the sergeant. Right, sir. All right, Davis, please come quietly. Would you stay away from me? I said come quietly, Davis. Come away. Right. Look me and don't take me. <coughs> A burrist, you burrist. Never point a gun at a police officer, Whoa. Davis. He'll come quietly now, Inspector. They were quite a pair. Defiant, snarling Tom Green. Moaning, whining Davis. The Inspector knew he had Green on the evidence, but the two bullets that had been fired from the back seat of the car were unexplained except by the presence of a second man. Was Davis the man? How to prove it? You haven't satisfied us, Davis. You've told us Green asked you to manage his garage. That's right. I don't know nothing about October the 26th. We think you do. Were you with Green that night? I, I was with my wife. And Green says he was with his girl. Did you shut up the garage? No. I yes, I did. No business that night, anyway. Yes, sir? A uh, note for you, sir. Thank you. I see. Thank you. All right, Davis, Green's talked. He's... There's nothing to talk about. He says you pulled the trigger. He says he was already in gear. And Ridgeway was going to let you go when you fired from the back seat. The cop had his foot on the running board. I never did a thing. Ah, nice timing, Sergeant. I think you'd better talk, Davis. You're forage in any case. Oh. Speak up, man. All right. Yeah. Sure, I was with Green that night. We picked a car to swipe down there in that Essex village. A doctor's car. We had to work fast. A dog started barking. We pushed the thing from in front of the house and got in. Greeny was driving. We'd have been fine, but that dumb cop had to stop us. He knew the car. Thought it was the doctor. But I didn't kill nobody. It was Greeny. All the way it was Greeny. I never killed nobody. Nobody. I'll tell you I didn't kill nobody. 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 All finished, Davis? <laughs> Would you like to see the note Sergeant Wright handed me? <laughs> no. No, I don't want to look. A receipt, Davis, for ten gallons of petrol stamped with a gallows and marked settled. And today, as I told you, that receipt can be found in a place of special honor in the Black Museum. Orson Welles will be back with you in just a moment. There was no doubt, of course. From the angle of the wounds in Constable Matthews' face, it was clear that at least two bullets had been fired from the back seat of the stolen car. Davis's counsel tried to pin the blame on Green. Green's counsel tried to place it all on Davis. The jury found both men guilty. And both were sentenced to hang. Green tried to cheat the gallows, hiding a razor blade in his cell and cutting his wrist one night. But the guards discovered this in time, and the trap fell twice one morning. So the case of Constable Matthews was marked. Settled. And now, until next time... Till we meet again in the same place and I tell you another story of the Black Museum I remain as always obediently yours
Thank you.